Well, good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again. This is the second of this week's reviews. We are in Greenland, and we are at Kangalusuak Airport in Greenland, Bravo Golf Sierra Foxtrot. This is a payware scenery by MK Studios, their latest release, and you're looking at version 1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. The download is 5.73 gigs and it installs at 6.23 gigs, so it's a fairly substantial download and installation, but you actually get quite a lot and we'll go into that shortly. Currently available from both Sim Market and the Inibuild store. I'll give you the Sim Market price. 20 euros and 39 cents, which equates to roughly 21 dollars 76 cents US or 17 pounds and 78 pence UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates from the euro and they do include VAT or tax, which of course may vary depending on which country you're in when you make your purchase. This is a fairly substantial scenery, it's quite a large download, but you also get three other airports as well, and we'll go into that shortly. Okay, so let's look at the list of features. It's a lifelike recreation of Kangalusuk Airport, including a detailed terminal interior, custom 20 centimeter per pixel satellite image covering the airport, and the city of Kangalusuk. Kangalusuk Airport and city elevation data based on high quality LiDAR scan, including runway and apron profiles. A full rendition of Kangalusuk City with over 150 custom buildings and additional custom handcrafted aircourts you get as well. Sisimuit, Bravo Golf Sierra Sierra. Manitsoak, Bravo Golf Mike Quebec. Kweasut, Bravo Golf Uniform Quebec. And Asiat, Bravo Golf Alpha Alpha, all with custom buildings and satellite and elevation data. And again, I apologize for my pronunciation. You get custom ground polygons with lines, dirt, markings, and other details. Realistic lighting for immersive day and night operations. 3D snow and icebergs visible depending on weather conditions. Custom visual effects. And everything is AI compatible. I will try later on to introduce um, winter weather and see if we can look at the snow, um, but a lot of the times I can't seem to get it right. But anyway, a real extensive list of features and you get four other additional airports. So this is quite a package. Um, and you can see from this shot the elevation data really looks um, quite impressive. Okay, so next let's look at some history. Okay, history. Kangalusuk Airport, Bravo Golf Sierra Foxtrot, is a public use airport owned and operated by the Greenland Airport Authority. The airport is located in a settlement in Kekwata Municipality in central western Greenland. Along with Narsaku Airport, Bravo Golf Bravo Whiskey, it is one of only two civilian airports in Greenland large enough to handle airliners. It is located away from the coast and hence less prone to fog and wind in comparison with other airports in Greenland. Kangalusuk Airport is the international hub for Air Greenland. The Kangalusuk area has very few inhabitants, around 500, so few passengers have their origin or destination here, with most passengers changing aircraft. Due to runway pavement failures caused by thawing of the permafrost and climate change, the airport will be closed to major commercial traffic in 2024. However, military use of the airport will continue. The first airport was built here during the US occupation in 1941 under the name Bluey West 8 and later renamed Sonderstrom Fjord Air Base. In the mid 1950s, transatlantic civilian flights began using the airbase for refueling. In 1956, Scandinavian Airlines was flying polar route service with three round-trip flights each week and operating a Douglas DC-6B prop liner on a routing of Copenhagen to Sonderstrom Field to Winnipeg to Los Angeles. This use enabled air travel to Greenland but it fell off during the 1960s as airline, airlines themselves got bigger and they gained greater range. Instead, the base became the hub of Greenland air traffic and it was handed over to civilian control in 1992. 
At a late 2011 Air Greenland meeting, the airline announced plans to move the main Greenland Intercontinental Air Hub away from Kangalusuk. A decision was made in 2016 to extend the runways of both Nuuk and Ilyusak airports to 7,200 feet or 2,200 meters, allowing them to receive medium-sized jetliners from Denmark and also to replace Narsiku with a new airport at Kwatatok. Even if Nuuk and Ilyusat will get direct flights from Europe, Kangalusuk will still be important partly due to more stable weather and the longer runway. Cruise ships want to exchange passengers at Greenland because the long journey time to Greenland and back to home is unsuitable for many passengers. They need a reliable airport with few delays because cruise ships have firm planned schedules with book ports and land acti activities. For this reason in 2018's plans were approved to build a better seaport near Kalakangalusuk together with a 9 mile or 15 km road to the airport. As of 2018, the small port cannot take cruise ships nor large freight ships, so transfer boats are needed. The airport terminal is open for 24 hours a day during the summer. Hotel Kangalusuk is set with 70 rooms and a restaurant. It is located within the terminal building of the airport, providing accommodation for transferring passengers and visitors to the area. Other amenities include a nightclub and a self-service bar open in the daytime. Several tourism outfitters share an office in, in the terminal alongside the tourist office and there are also other more simple accommodations in Kangalusuk. So that does it for history. Um, many of you, if you've been flight swimming for some time, will remember the name Sonderstrom Field, um, which acted as an emergency airport for aircraft doing transatlantic routes who might uh, suddenly have to divert for emergency reasons. So this airport's been around a long time and had a lot of history. I can tell you right off the bat, MTA Studios have done a wonderful job in terms of the presentation of this airport and we haven't yet looked at the others and I will try in this video if I get time to have a quick look at the other airports too. So that does it for history. Let's have a look at the runways. So looking at this shot here, runway 09, I'm a little concerned that um, the pappies are, might be a little bit off. This looks a little bit of a low approach to me. Um, however, it might be different actually in the aircraft. And also it would have been nice to have this correctly modelled. Um, it needs to be fully um, horizontal and not sort of going into the uh, terrain like this. It needs to be on a little plinth so that it's fully horizontal for the approach lights. So runways. Kangalusuk operates a single runway 0927 measuring 9,219 feet or 2,810 meters and is constructed from asphalt. The airport lies at an elevation of 165 feet or 50 meters and sits in the GMT UTC minus two hours time zone. Now Greenland does indeed observe daylight saving time or DST and so September now is currently three hours behind the UK. So runway 09, and we're looking down the throat of it now, features high intensity runway lighting, high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators on the left side and you can see that there exactly as it should be. This runway features a standard instrument landing system with Y and Z approach options. It also has an RNP as well as an NDB Y and Z approach options too. So there you can see the runways exactly as per the charts. The only thing really that needs to be fixed in the scenery is this approach bar here, which should be fully horizontal. So let's have a look at the other end, runway 27. So here we are looking down at the other end of the throat of runway 27. And the charts say basically that all it has is the high intensity runway lighting and that you can see there. There are no pappies or no approach light systems. Now this runway has an unspecified RNP A and B approach option and that's all. So you can land here but obviously you're looking, you're having to, to look to be really careful of the terrain surrounding the airport as well. If I remember correctly in the old days when this was Sunderstrom Field, landings were made up the valley on runway 09 only, which is why they've got the ILS there. But there you go, this is quarter to seven in the evening by the way, it's um, late September 2023 and um, such a beautiful glow around the airport. So no jetways here, 
um, everything's open so let's get down to the uh, scenery itself and have a look during the daytime and as I said we'll also try to get a quick look at some of the other airports included in this scenery project. Okay, so as usual, a quick tour across the airport from above to have a look. This is the North Apron. This is where civilian and commercial aircraft will park. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of detail. And um, we'll also have a look at the terminal and other bits and pieces as well shortly. But uh, some stunning modeling and weathering effects here it really does look great. MK Studios developers really have come on strong and it looks brilliant. The modelling here is really nice there, you can see the road that goes round the airport. And um, the terrain looks good, it fits into the terrain, so much so that it's hard to see what's been um, modelled by the developer and what's default. But as you can see, I mean it all looks really, really nice. Probably a great place here to get the helicopter out and have a look round. So as you can see, this extends all the way out past the end of the runway 09 threshold. Lots of little buildings um, and little things to explore. There goes the road up the hill. Um, and interesting to see the cars up there too, that all follow the roads, which is really good. No messing about here. I mean, okay, I understand this is all default, but it seems to work. So now as we cross the threshold of runway 09, we'll head to the southern side of the airport, which is largely military. But again, you can see the modeling and the terrain definition is really, really good. It really does, it's, it's a real masterpiece here, I think. So, we've got some interceptor jets on the left and some Chinooks, the helicopters down there on the right. Again, some wonderful modelling, not only the jets and the vehicles, army vehicles down there too. Um, and the buildings look great, simple but really good. Got a helicopter there. have a look at the tower here so here's a close-up look let's just give you an idea of the quality of the buildings It's really wonderful so here's the inside of the control tower which is modeled no people unfortunately would have been nice to see a controller but that really looks great and just looking out the other end there you can see some of the screens are also um, showing bits and pieces on them which is good I mean that's nice and just a quick shot from the other side, when you're looking at the buildings here, you can see the quality of the weathering on the buildings and just how it looks. It really does look the part. So as we carry on past the control tower, um, as I said here, you can see just some of the quality airside fence down there to the right. Um, and you've even got smokestacks, working smokestack there. You can just see stuff coming out of the chimneys on the right. And here we've got some, I think they're Dash 8s from Air Greenland. Dash 8s or Dash 7s, they look really beautiful, very nice models, really good. So here, looking up close, I mean, the models are excellent, right down to the tyres. And it all looks wonderful, I mean they look great. Uh, the con ramp concrete looks good, the buildings are nicely weathered. And here you can see smoke coming out from the um, chimneys here. And here we continue up the taxiway. You can see some of the signage on the ground is good. You've got wigwags there too. Um, the fence line looks great. And to be honest, it all looks really nice. The modeling is of a really high standard. And everything right down to the foliage. Crash barriers there on the side of the road. Road signs included too. And along with the obligatory warning signs, um, I can't uh, obviously read 
Danish, but that obviously tells you that um, the entry is forbidden. A very nice sign there in English and in Danish. And again, up close, it's eminently readable. Road signs, all looks really good. It just looks stunning. It's a stunning location um, and the quality of the modelling and what's been done here just makes it, really enhances it all. And there's a high level view showing you the north apron where I'm parked, which is where the airliners would go on the right hand side there and you've got the military and other areas on the left. So let's get down to the apron and have a look, a close up look at where you would be parking. So here's my aircraft parked on stand one. Uh, as you can see, basically it's a pull in and then turn round and you basically start your engines and then um, taxi out. Um, a nice looking ramp, thoroughly weathered. Um, it just looks great, it looks really good. Everything is there. There's the fire station down there to the left with the obligatory tenders. Some nice buildings, um, rockery. You've got blue airfield edge lights here as well. Some old baggage containers. I mean, all of this looks really true to form and just adds to the ambience and atmosphere of the place. There's the main terminal. Um, and um, again, look at the ground detail. You've even got some um, snow machines anyway. Snowmobiles, I think they are. Again, you've got um, the obligatory um, various baggage dollies here. Weathering on the building, this all looks good. I mean, the truck looks great as well. So, and these are typical of Danish buildings with the colouring. Anybody who's been up to Norway or Denmark in the winter um, will know that um, they use this colouring a lot to, to stand out against the snow. So a close up look at the main terminal, um, very interesting design as you can see, um, but the modelling's excellent right down to the wood here, some baggage down there, um, and the stairwell, this is the emergency exit I presume from the building, it all looks great. Let's pop inside the terminal, have a quick look at the interior modelling. So first of all the interior air side of the upper level. Again, it looks great. No people here, but there may be a reason why. There we are looking in the other direction, and you can also see through the glass door there to the emergency exit there at the, at the side. Just wanted to see if I could read that. That's obviously the logo for Greenland Airports there on the, on the mat. And again, you can look out through the glass to see the apron as well. So that's outside the upper level. Let's go down to the ground level now where you can see people and things going on. So a very nice scene here. Um, this is airside, the duty-free shops over there. Um, quite a lot of people, but uh, it looks good. It really does. And just a little track across here to have a look at some of the signage. So this is what I like too, when you get up close to these signs and they don't fade out and you can see everything there. So a little look around here, there's your duty free, there's your security and x-ray machines. Very nice indeed. And the detail is excellent. Okay, so we're going to go through the wall here because I want to see what's on the other side. And here's the other side there. Again, well, I think we're, I think we're airside. I'm not entirely sure of the layout here. But again, a really nice little scene. Lots of people. Um, and I mean, the interior is done in very, very high detail, which is very nice indeed. Here's the stairwell that goes down to the ramp, so this indeed must be airside. And again you've got um, signs, hoardings, advertising, modelling, all looks really really good. So 
So there's the entrance that goes out to the ramp. And you've got another one there. Presumably they sort of arrive, come in from one side and go out to the other. It's very, very nice indeed. Let's go land side of the main terminal and have a look there. So here we are looking at the same building land side and you can see it's got an adjoining building. So I would assume you come down the road here, um, somewhere to park, um, and you go in through one of these inlets here into this building. And you can see by this shot that um, this a building that's attached is actually not modelled inside. But you can see from this shot, I mean, the modelling on the buildings externally generally is, is really, really good. It's a very high standard. Everything, including the um, stilts. Um, lots of places in the Arctic Circle, north of the Arctic Circle, have buildings up on stilts because of the permafrost. The continuing changes in the permafrost below the buildings can affect the building stability. So, um, and also, so when you heat the buildings, then the heat isn't lost or invaded by the cold from the permafrost. So lots of buildings like this on stilts is a common feature. But as you can see, lots of detail, lots of things to explore, which I'm not going to go into now because otherwise the review can get really long. Um, I know I'd like to have a quick look at some of the other airports too, but you can see a beautiful location. This is typical and lots to explore. Um, chances to get the helicopter out, I mean, it's just brilliant. Quick look at the other side, well we've had a look at it really, but um, I'll just have a quick shot from high altitude. So there you get a good idea of the detail, I mean it just looks fantastic, this is a really nice airport. Let's turn the lighting down, have a quick look at dusk. So five minutes past seven local time and you can see the lighting has just come on. Um, and it looks great, it looks lovely. From this shot you can see the, the, the subtleness of it and the way it sort of works. And you've got a flashing light over there on the hill on the other side so you've got some kind of obstruction. This is looking at runway 27 threshold. Um, again you've got um, road lighting which is being lit from the appropriate ropes, uh, lightings here so no globes floating around which is good and lots of subtle little lighting around the area here. Let's get down to the main ramp and have a look. So still a fair amount of daylight as you can see, but again, um, the lighting is really nice, provided by the correct lamps, no globes floating around that I can see. It all looks very impressive. And there you can see into the terminal, there's the appropriate lighting inside, which kind of shows up people and stuff, and that, like, that looks great. And just going a little higher there you can see various buildings that are lit from various points. It's, it's lovely, it's a beautiful scene. And there looking across the runway, um, down there you can see the wigwags working and the appropriate lighting. We'll just have a quick go across the runway here to the south side, a military apron. And there's the road, of course, and again, you can see the, the light poles that light up the road. So here's the military apron. Some very nice touches there, the lighting. Just a quick riz around the control tower. So that's how it looks from outside and that's how it looks inside. Nice lighting, very nice indeed. So a quick look at the military apron, you've got the jets here all parked up. Um, a little bit of lighting but not an awful lot but it's um, again nice to see some of the vehicles on the roads that have got headlights going. We'll just cross very quickly and have a look at some of these buildings. Some very nice subtle lighting, down lighting. Again, um, much of the light here being provided by the appropriate lamps. No globes that I can see, which is a really good thing. And it really does look nice. When you look at the detail on these roads, 
everything down to the telephone wires, power lines. Beautiful. Really is. So much to explore here away from the airport itself. A quick look at the back of the Greenland Air Greenland hangar. Again, you can see the same wonderful attention to detail and lighting. No Sobo globes floating around anywhere, so I'm really impressed. Very, very good. Okay, so let's drop it down to night time very quickly. Okay, 10 p.m. local time. As you can see, the lighting has come up. Um, if I remember correctly, in certainly when it was called Sonderstrom, the airport didn't o operate 24 hours. Um, partly because of the fact that it's so difficult to make a landing in this terrain. Um, but I don't know. But it's uh, nice to see that they've done the night lighting. So it's all pretty dark, um, as you'd expect it to be. There's my aircraft in the foreground with the terminal in the background. When I mean, the lighting is excellent, it looks beautiful. But um, I certainly wouldn't want to land here in the darkness. Um, unless I really had to. Taxiing could be fun. So you can see from this shot, you've got blue airfield edge lights, but there really isn't much else to guide you in on the, the runway. Ah, okay, so there you go, there's the runway. You've got the exit that takes you into the, into the sort of parking area, into the apron. But again, not so much in terms of lighting, you're gonna need your nose gear light to help you find your way in. But uh, all looks really good. And again, a quick shot across the terminal. There's also development, I believe, inside this building here, uh, which I will leave you guys to explore because I'd like to try and bring some snow up and see if we can see what that looks like. So let's bring it back to daytime. So here I've just turned the snow on and you can see visibility is pretty weird. Um, but this is what it might look like. So as you can see, the visibility is pretty bad here, but um, the, 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 it, it looks quite impressive, doesn't it? See the runway and taxiways. And there's a final shot across there, across the apron and the runway to the right. So lastly, what I've done is turned on live weather. Um, I'm not sure if this is correct. Actually, let's um, have a quick look at flight radar and see what the weather forecast is currently. Okay, the current METAR, uh, 26 today as of 10.50 Zulu. The wind 0506 knots. Visibility is good. NDV, not sure what that is. Overcast at 4,600 feet. Temperature 01. Dew point minus 1 in the QNH1016. So there's the weather. It's overcast conditions. Temperature's 1 degrees. And you've got a cool, a calm wind at zero, coming from 050. And this is how it looks in the sim. So there you are, folks. We're back, clear skies. Um, really, really nice. I, just, I love this airport. It does. It, it looks fantastic. It's a stunning location. Um, and just this airport alone, I think, will be worth the dosh. But yet you get four other airports. So while we're there, let's have a quick look at those other airports. So we're going to start with Sisimuit, Brava Golf Sierra Sierra. Okay, welcome to Sisimut, Brava Go Sierra Sierra. This is one of four um, additional airports in the uh, MK Studios Greenland package. And this is the view or the overview of the airport itself. Quite a short runway, um, but perfect for um, small prop driven aircraft, helicopters. There's the approach to the runway, appropriate signage, everything you need there. And there's a nice view of the terminal. Um, again, you've got this um, outstanding colour scheme where buildings are either red or blue or bright colours, again because of snow conditions. And there you've got a Dash 7 belonging to Air Greenland. And I've switched to the helicopter just to make things a bit easier. Okay, can't see the flag, doesn't seem to be animated, but um, this is lovely, beautiful. And you've even got internal development in the control tower. I mean, that's nice. I mean, it's very, very nice indeed. Everything right down to the radio on the lower right there. And a complete view out through the, through the um, control tower to the airport itself. Very nice indeed. 
So a really nice little airport. There's a boat dock down there as well. And you've got a boat out here. The road continues out. Uh, there's some bits and pieces here. Oh, this is all right for exploration. Really, really nice indeed. So that's Sisimuit, Brava Gol Sierra Sierra. That's the first of the four additional airports. Now let's have a look at the next one, Manic Sock, Brava Golf Mike Quebec. So welcome to Manic Sock, Bravo Golf Mike Quebec. This is another airport a little bit further up north of the western coast and as you can see modelled in the same beautiful way as the other one. Here you've got the village with things going on and other places to explore here nearby. So once again, very similar construction and modelling here, but again, attention to detail is wonderful. You've got the fire um, tender there and various vehicles and utilities here. There's a default helicopter part mine next door. Um, you've got Pappy's airfield edge lights. I mean, this is all really, really nice. Again, there's internal development in the control tower. There you can see the fence line above the cliff there. It really does look nice. Very, very nice indeed. And they're looking down the runway. Um, it's a little bit longer. I'm going to try and put um, some of the runway lengths um, in the uh, in the video of these airports so you get an idea, which might help you. And there you've got some modelling, some of which I believe is default and some of which they probably added. Again, lots to explore here. So that's Manit Sock. Next, let's go and have a look at Quasot, Bravo Golf Uniform, Quebec. So welcome to Quasot, Bravo Golf Uniform, Quebec. And as you can see from this shot, you're looking at a gravel runway with what I can see little or no aids at all, apart from the windsock there. And the other thing about this location, icebergs, tons of them. <laughs> so again, lots to explore here. Just loads of icebergs and some amazing terrain. I mean, this is going to be a great place to fly, certainly in the summer. So once again, a nice simply, mod simply modelled airport with all that you need. The tower control is done as well. Um, and you've got this uh, really nice Air Greenland Dash 7 sitting there. You've got a default helicopter and I parked mine there too. I mean, it all looks very nice indeed. And just a little look behind. It's just lovely. Um, you know, these airports are just very nicely done. So that's Quasut for you. Now let's go and have a look at the last one, Arsiat, Bravo Golf Alpha Alpha. So lastly, welcome to Arsiat, Bravo Golf Alpha Alpha. And here you've got um, a tarmac runway, asphalt runway with pappies. Um, this is the only, the only criticism really I have of this is um, here you shouldn't have pappies like this. This should be properly horizontal um, so that they're level with the runway. Um, and the approach path on um, Karl Kangalasuk um, was also wobbly, as you can remember. That just needs to be fixed, really. But again, another beautiful little airport set in a nice location. And looking towards the other end, you can see there's a definite slope in this runway, so you've got to be careful here. Um, there's the parking area here. You've got a little port with some bits and pieces to look at as well. So again, some nice modelling, uh, the Air Greenland Dash 7 sitting there as well, my helicopter's parked over there, um, and it just looks really nice, very nice indeed. Again, you've got the appropriate runway entry and exit signage there, and as you can see from this shot, there's the road that leads away from the airport towards the town, and you've got the small port here with various bits and pieces to look at and explore. Some wonderful places to get the helicopter out. So that was Arsiat for you, Bravo Golf Alpha Alpha. So there you've got four additional airports to explore um, around um, and providing the conditions are up to it. I mean, it's just great. Maybe we'll do a video with a helicopter. So there you go, folks. Welcome back to uh, Kangalusuk. Um, hope you enjoyed that brief look at the other four airports. Um, some of the modeling is um, pretty much the same through each airport, but it has been done and lots for you to explore. So here we are back at Kangalusuk. Thought I'd change the time to the early morning just to see what that looks like. And here you can see the airport bathed in the early morning glow of the sunrise. 
So there you go, Kanga Lusuk Airport in Greenland, Brava Golf Sierra Foxtrot, to Payware Scenery by MK Studios, and this is their release version 1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. Also includes the airports of Sisimuit, Brava Golf Sierra Sierra, Manitsoc, Brava Golf Mike Quebec, Kwasut, Brava Golf Uniform Quebec, and Arziat, Brava Golf Alpha Alpha. So you get five airports in this package, including Kangalusuk here, which has been highly developed. The download here is 5.73 gigs and it installs at 6.23 gigs, so it's fairly substantial. Currently available from Sim Market and from the Innibuild store as well. I'll give you the Sim Market price, which is €20.39, which equates to $21.76 US and £17.78 pence UK. As ever, the US and the UK prices are estimates from the Euro and they do include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending slightly on your country of purchase when you make the, com uh, when you make the purchase. So time to give you my conclusions. What do I think? Is it worth the money? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the nicest sceneries I've seen for a while, um, and that's not only my opinion, um, there's a colleague of mine who bought this before I did, um, and just to let you know, I paid for this, I wasn't given it for review, I bought it, um, and as ever, the thoughts and comments on my own have not been influenced by anybody else. That said, this is a, a beautiful product. Um, and what makes it also really good is the fact is the terrain around it. Greenland looks beautiful. The default terrain, I don't know if it's been upgraded recently. It may well have been done as part of Denmark and the Euro upgrade. I'm not certain. But as you can see, the terrain is, is quite amazing and the airport complements it. Um, you've just got an amazing place to fly in here. Not the greatest place for weather, although it's better than many other airports in Greenland, as has been mentioned in the history there. But uh, you get an awful lot for your money. Um, you know, I mean, for, you know, $22 US or 18 quid, it was a lot here. And it's really, really good. It's been very well modelled. MK Studios are continuing to prove their modelling skills. And I really can't find anything wrong with it. It's, it's lovely. The only issue I have is the approach lighting into runway 09 here at Kangalusuk. Um, all of the lights should be level. They shouldn't be sloping down the side of the hill. They should be properly level. Um, but that's um, really just something they can fix should they wish to do so. But it's a beautiful scenery, highly recommended. I've got no problem with it at all. And it's at a very competitive price. Um, this is a stone throw from Iceland. Um, you can visit it on the way across the Atlantic as well and certainly it's going to be worth getting a helicopter out and having an explore. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, ending who we're lucky enough another review here. Hope you've enjoyed it and hope you've been wondering about this. I hope I've managed to give you something of the flavour of what this scenery has. It's very, very nice. Highly recommend it, really no qualms at all. So thanks for joining me. Um, look out for the next review this week. Hopefully I'd want to get the last review out this week. We'll be looking at Gerba Airport in Tunisia. <clears throat> it's a, another payware scenery by the Flight Sim Development Group or FSDG. And we'll have a good look and see how that looks. So thanks for joining me in this review, folks. Um, take care and I'll see you later in the week. Bye bye for now.